Hello, everyone, and welcome to the World Service. Claudia, good to see you. Hey, hey, everybody. Welcome to the live worship service on this World Week of Prayer of the YWCA and YMCA. How are what you doing? I'm fine, thank you. What a pleasure. May I introduce you to Claudia from Peru. Good to have you here. Yeah, and I have the pleasure to introduce you, Daniel, from Germany. I'm so happy to see you now. Thank you so much. I'm really excited to be part of this event today. And what about you? How are you doing? Yeah, well, me too. I'm so happy to meet people from all over the world today gathering this service. I'm so excited to get to know where all you're from. That's important. We invite you all to write a greeting and where and where you come from into this into the chat box. Yes, let us know where you come from. Type it into the Facebook comment section and we are happy to greet you. Yeah, we're so excited to know where you are. And also if you can write something else, maybe also we can share with all of you here. Oh, we have we have people, we have uh, number one. So welcome. Welcome to people from Watford in England and from Kosovo, just seen. Wow, I think we have a lot of people from all over the world. Oh, we have people from West Virginia, USA. Welcome. And also from Black Country Group in England, from Zambia and from the APAY from Hong Kong. Welcome, everybody. Good to have you here. West Virginia, yeah. United States. How great is that? Yeah, I have a, Nepal, people from Nepal. Oh, my God. We are all <laughs> over the world, Daniel. That's yes. incredible. Yeah. It's amazing how people gather today from Sweden, from Malawi, from Edinburgh, from Colombia. I think oh this is God. a great mixture and a great view that we have from YMCA and YWCA world. So welcome, everybody. We are happy to have you here. Today's topic, today's theme is called Beauty from Brokenness. And people from different YMCAs, from different YWCAs, they would lead us into this worship service in, say, in singing, in saying some prayers and giving us the sermon in sharing and reflection on the theme through a video on the fascinating art of a lot of other saints. So welcome. Yeah. And oh, we have people from Zimbabwe too. So we want to start our service and we would like to introduce Casey Harden, the Secretary General of the World YWCA. She will lead us in the opening greeting. Friends, we invite you to participate in this part. When you see the word all appears on the screen, it prompts you to please read the response part. So welcome Casey and thank you for being part of this service. Thank you, Claudia, and thank you, Daniel. Uh, a very warm welcome to those from the global YWCA and YMCA community uh, from all over the world, as we see, um, that are join us in fellowship today. Last year, we came together online for our week of prayer focused on what was impacting us all at the time, and that was the pandemic. We centered our meditation, conversation, and prayer on hope and how to create and be resilient and how to be in resilient community through practical spirituality. And this year, that journey continues as the pandemic continues with our theme, Beauty from Brokenness. This week of prayer guides us to a transformative journey where we center healing and restoration, service to community, forgiveness, inclusivity, and dignity. The booklet for week of prayer, which can be found online if you haven't seen it yet, it can be used well beyond this week. We can continue to individually and collectively reflect on God's unconditional love for us and renew our commitment to love all as our own. This week of prayer, we also reflect on two issues that are critical for a just and loving future. One is the need for decent, fair, and dignified working environments, and also the need for climate justice. The fervor and conviction we've seen this week in Glasgow, where both YWCA and YMCA leaders have been leading, it cannot be confined to just those two weeks in Europe. And likewise, we must seek beauty from brokenness beyond this week. We must continue to strive for a just world. And often that's easier said than done, this idea of a just world. 
YMCA and YWCA, we envisage a less weary world where each person experiences the fullness of life and lives in dignity, enjoys equity, regardless of religion or spiritual belief, region or culture, race, ability, family of origin or gender. And that's an ambitious vision. And we are all well served to acknowledge brokenness and then find beauty or do both at the same time as a practice as we serve others with love. And so we can serve others with love. So now for the opening greeting, as Claudia said, we invite those of you with us online to participate. Grace, mercy, and peace from, our, from God, our creator, and the Lord Jesus Christ be with you. And also, and also with, you. with you. This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Thank you very much, Katie, for being here. We will continue in our worship service with listening and with singing. Pastor John Owen from the USA will offer a song called My Testimony, composed by Elevation Worship. Enjoy. Greetings, Global Family. My name is Pastor John Owens from City of Lights Church in Indianapolis, Indiana. Let's worship. I saw Satan fall like lightning. I saw darkness run for cover. Still the miracle that my name is registered in heaven. I believe in signs and wonders. I have resurrection power. Still the miracle that I just can't get over. My name is registered in heaven. My praise belongs to you forever. my 
grace rewrote my story. I'll testify by Jesus Christ the righteous. I'm justified. This is my testimony. Oh, I'm alive. This is my testimony from there to life. Cause grace rewrote my story. I'll testify by Jesus Christ the righteous. I'm justified. This is my testimony. This is my testimony. Continue to pray together, family. God bless. Thank you. Thank you so much, Pastor Young, for sending us this wonderful worship song. Let us now attend the reading of the scripture. For young people, we'll do the reading of text from the scripture. Thank you, Elise, Joanna, Salem, Rafa Noharana, Lola, Runayado, Annie, and Dorothy for leading us through these biblical passages. हामीले घोषणा गरेका कुराहरू वास्तवमा कसले विश्वास गर्छ वास्तवमा कसले परम प्रभुको दण्डलाई स्वीकार गर्दछ उ एक सानो पालुवा जस्तो परम प्रभुको अगाडि हुर्कियो उ सुक्खा भुइमा उम्री रहेको एउटा जरा जस्तै थियो उसमा त्यस्तो खास गौरव थिएन उसमा विशेष कुरा देखिदैन थियो यदि हामीहरूले उसलाई हेर्यो भने हामी त्यस्तो केही खास कुरा देख्ने छैनौ जसले उ प्रति हामी आकृष्ट नै हुने कारणले देखिदैन मानिसले उसलाई हाँसुको पात्र बनाए अनि आफ्नो साथीहरूले उसलाई छाडे दिए उ पीडा नै पीडाले भरिएको मानिस थियो उ राम्रो प्रकारले निको हुनेछ भनेर जान्दथे मानिसहरूले उसलाई हेर्न दिएनन् हामीले उसलाई ध्यानै दिएनौँ तर उसले हाम्रा कष्टहरू आफ्नै ठान्यो उसले हाम्रा यातनाहरूको भारी उठायो अनि हामीले सोच्यौँ उसलाई परमेश्वरले दण्ड दिनुभयो हामीले सोच्यौँ उसले गरेको दुष्ट कर्मको लागि परमेश्वरले दण्ड दिनुभयो तर हामीले गरेका भूल कामहरूको लागि उसलाई पीडा सहन बाध्य गरायो उसलाई हाम्रो दोषको लागि श्राप दियो हाम्रो ऋणको निम्ति उसलाई सजाय दियो उसको पीडाले नै हामीलाई क्षमा गरियो Ifana <laughs> บ้านอวนาจวีอาซุนฟามารีนะนัมเบลินเจวบฟัมเซียงบุนไนท์อาเมนเพราะว่าพระเจ้าทรงให้พระบุตรองค์เดียวของพระองค์เพื่อทุก
Thank you very much for participating through reading the scriptures. Thank you very much. And we are united here from what YMCA and YWCA with local YMCAs and YWCA from all over the world. We have some greetings from Cameroon coming in. We have some greetings from Chile coming in. We have greetings from the Philippines, from Sri Lanka, from Honduras. It's simply amazing. Welcome everybody gathering this online service. Continuing with this worship and with praying, we invite you to pray with us for stillness, for comfort, and for peace. Knowing that God is among us when we pray and he listens when we hear. Claudia will start with us to pray as the leader and I will lead you in reading together with all of you the response together. You can see the, uh, the prayer on the screen. And please feel free to join us now in prayer. Claudia, let us start. Thank you. Almighty God, from whom all blessings flow. We acknowledge your presence with us. Jesus, our God, shepherd in the brokenness of our fatigue. Lead us to the beauty of green pastures and still waters. Holy Spirit, our comforter in the brokenness of confusion of and despair. Anoint our heads with the oil of gladness and your blessed peace. Amen. Thank you, Daniel. Well, to continue with our service, I want to ask you, have you ever heard of Kitsui? It is a special method from Japan fixing something that is broken. So our friends from Osaka YMCA produced the following wonderful video presenting us the deepness and spiritual impact of Kintsugi. But let us not talk more about it. So let us watch and listen what it is all about. Well, amen. Thank you for leading us in prayer. I'm Pastor Bjorn Dixon, and I serve with the YMCA of the North in Minneapolis and St. Paul. And it's so good to be in prayer with you today. As we continue to reflect on this theme of how God makes beauty out of our brokenness, I want to draw our attention to the art form that has been featured in this week's prayer booklet. To do that, I want to introduce you to a friend of the Osaka YMCA in Japan, her name is Maki Aizawa. Maki is an artist and producer with a passion for Japan, her native country. As an artist, Maki now lives and works in Sonoma, California, fostering collaborations and projects, mainly with Japanese artists. Her goal is to build community locally and globally, using the arts to bring people together. Everything you have around you is so personal and has to feel right. And something handmade or something that person is putting so much love and effort or skills, it's very elevating experience to be, even if it's a small cup, when it breaks, of course, it's traumatizing and you really can't throw away. And to connect with Kintsugi, I can't fix or I can't repair or mend right away. Maybe two weeks later or two months later, my soul is ready to mend the piece. With the traditional Kintsugi, artists use the sap from sumac tree and also sprinkling gold powder. For the modern Kintsugi, we use epoxy putty, resin lacquer, and brass powder, and uh, thinner. So Tomomi is a potter, but when she tried traditional Kintsugi, she was highly allergic to sumac sap. So she discovered this modern method, so she has been practicing this for the last 10 years. Last year, 
in 2020 when everything changed. Tomomi and I started discussing how we want to proceed and we wanted to continue the philosophy of Kintsugi that everything is connected with care. Many institutions are teaching for hundreds of people and we rather wanted to have the quality of Kintsugi to take care of each piece, each person really well with Tomomi in Tokyo and I'm in Sonoma facilitating this. I think this was our way of connecting and keeping in touch with the world who have the same interest. And somehow we uh, started teaching people all over the world. It was our expression to keep going during this time and mending together feeling the connection when isolation was happening for everyone in the entire world. This process was elevating us to reach the people with the quality of connection and the materials. But things are never permanent. There is a ease and there is a way to let go of things when the timing is right. And the Kintsugi really shows that as well. When it's completed, it feels, oh, it's changing and it's imbuing the new life. So that's the essence of it. Maki, thank you so much for joining us today and for telling us about the broken beauty of Kintsugi. Thank you for having me. What would you share with us? Is, is perhaps the most important lesson that we can learn from Kintsugi as we all look to the future and, and walk through our daily life. Right, right. So as I'm day to day, I feel there is a sense of grief or something happens in life. Um, but because I'm around, I'm sharing the art of Kintsugi day to day, my children usually when they break something, they first say, oh, let's, let's um, repair this. Let's just, we can mend this with using Kintsugi method. Kintsugi really teaches us to um, not just throw away. And then after the acceptance of sad feeling or broken peace, you could really connect them and then reuse them rather than just automatically throwing away. So by saying that we can really mend and create something different or something new. And it's just not only repairing the piece, it's bringing some new life to the piece. So I think that that type of metaphor, that type of philosophical idea could be used in our life now. Um, that there are so many, so many turmoil, um, sad events going on, but in the midst of that, there are really um, wonderful elements in life. Yes, well, it's so, it's so fun to hear that you're passing along the lessons of Kintsugi to your children and right. to the next right. generation. Yes. Maki, thank you so much for sharing with us today. And on behalf of the YMCA and YWCA, we bless you and wish you the very best as you continue to bring people together through the arts. Thank you so much, yes. <laughs> what a joy to learn about Kintsugi today as a picture of God's healing, redemptive work in each of our lives. As we heard in our scripture readings earlier, we have this treasure in jars of clay. And we praise God that he puts us back together in Christ for his glory and his purposes. Thanks be to God. Wow, thank you for this wonderful and inspiring video, bringing something broken to new life, renewing life and giving them new purpose. How awesome is that? Thank you very much, all of you, for producing this video. And may I ask you, Global YMCA and YWCA community, how do you feel after watching this video? 
what's in your mind. I, I would like to invite you to type your experiences, your sentimentals, your, your thoughts into the, pre in the comment section if you want to and share your thoughts about it. Yes, thank you so much. It was amazing, so inspiring as Daniel said. So while you were writing down your comments on the chat, now we have the privilege to welcome Joe Eva Bohol, an associate, associate from YWCA and World Council of Churches. She will share a wonderful message about beauty from brokenness with us. So dear Joy, thank you so much for being with us today. Welcome again, and we are excited to listen to your message now. Thank you so much, um, Claudia and Daniel. Wow, you know, like I feel like um, the, the message has already been uh, shared and I just need to add a little bit of input uh, from what has already been shared. Uh, right now I am in Glasgow in the UK uh, for the climate conference or COP26 here with uh, thousands of people really demanding for climate action and climate justice. Um, it's the last day and um, the last day of this conference, but um, another day and a beginning and a, or a continuous day for more work to be done in terms of implementation and holding accountable our leaders in really acting on climate justice. In this week that in the past days that I've been here, I've been walking around and joining different events people's events um, on the side events uh, during COP. And you know what? Um, there's so much pain. There's so much struggle among people from different parts of the world in this ongoing crisis on climate. We hear stories of uh, people from the Pacific who are already planning to, dis uh, to, to move from one country, uh, from one island to the next because they are seeing that um, sea walls are no longer working as the, the rising sea level is continuing to happen in their places. We hear stories of the indigenous peoples in the Amazons as they are also losing their ancestral lands because of the ongoing um, globalization or ongoing progress um, that's happening of, on in infrastructure and mining of different companies from rich countries. So much pain, so much um, anger is also um, present. I could feel it while I, um, I'm walking down the, the different events, while I meet people. And a lot of frustrations are also um, going around the atmosphere here while we are waiting for the decision makers to really be intentional in, in taking a step and taking and being bold to really um, work on climate justice. So brokenness, we talk about brokenness and indeed this world is so much broken and we can see it every day. And COVID-19 even magnified this brokenness that has already been existing in our day-to-day -day life um, here. So I'm coming, I, I'm from the Philippines and this is also strongly, uh, strongly resonate with me, um, especially now that in the current administration in the Philippines, a lot of our sisters and brothers belonging to indigenous peoples group are in the extent of, of having their existence being threatened merely because they fight for their right to their ancestral lands, protecting and preserving communities and the environment. In our recent youth online consultation that we do at the World Council of Churches on the topic of racism and climate change, a colleague from the Philippines shared that in the past years, an alarming surge of red tagging and extrajudicial killings of land defenders like the Lumads or the indigenous peoples in the Philippines is really prevalent in the, in the country. In fact, recently, a 12-year-old land defender was shot dead in their family farm by the military. This group have been pushed to the fringes of the society 
and the Philippine government does not provide access to basic social services to the IP groups. They are historically neglected and oppressed from the time of colonialism in the country and until today. This story of the Lumads resonates to many other stories of the people I've met here, people, communities, island nations that I've met here in COP these past days. These are people who are here fighting for their existence, fighting for climate justice, fighting not only for themselves, but for the entire creation. This story and day-to-day -day struggle of living and survival is real in many contexts and countries around the world. Grief, depressed, emotional, di disappointed. These are words that resonate among climate activists, both young and old I met in these past days here in Glasgow. Grief, because even with the obvious signs of the times brought by climate change, like extreme weather conditions and flooding, rising sea levels, intense forest fires, to name a few, leaders of government and business sectors still have not committed to concrete solutions to address the climate crisis. Actually, it's the climate emergency. A young colleague that is said to me yesterday that he is so depressed to see leaders not taking a big step and bold step to address climate change, especially leaders from countries that contribute largely to the destruction of our home, our only home, the earth. Listening to the stories of pain and struggle of our sisters and brothers who are pushed to the fringes of the society, women, children, youth, indigenous peoples, people living with disability, to name a few. It brought me to reflect to our text today, found in 2 Corinthians 4. In verses 8 to 9, it says, We are afflicted in every way, but not crushed, perplexed, but not driven to despair, persecuted, but not forsaken, struck down, but not destroyed. To be honest, if we look at the situations I mentioned earlier from a worldly perspective, we'll see those from the countries contributing less to greenhouse gas emission, those who live in islands that are disappearing due to rising sea level, we could see them from a worldly perspective as victims of the brokenness in the world. Again, this world is broken. Broken because of our human sin that created inequality and injustices. However, the text doesn't end in that brokenness narrative. In verses 10 until 12, we read that these difficulties are only outward and temporary. That there is something eternal. That God, that Christ, the Spirit of God is living in us. That through suffering and struggle, Jesus is seen through us. The text continues in verse 16 when it says, Do not lose heart or do not be discouraged. That although it is true that we live in a broken world, as Christians, we also know that God's Spirit is still moving and working in and through us. A young Lumad indigenous person from the Philippines and a friend said when I asked him, Are you, aren't you tired of doing for justice work? Are people are, are being killed because of this? Aren't you tired? And you know what he said? He told me that even though he and his peers are tired of fighting for their rights and struggles to their lands, he will not stop here. They will continue pressing on. He said that his faith in Christ empowers him and his community to pursue what is right and just and to bring God's kingdom on earth and abundant life for all. Maima, another amazing young person I've met here 
and a friend from Fiji shared that for them as Pacificas, they said that unless they take the initiative to raise their voices on what they believe in, the, uh, these people from the frontline communities of the Pacific believe that sharing their stories of resilience will call out on high emitting countries to take responsibility for their actions and enable change. Take note, enable change. They said that they believe they are not victims of the crisis, but communities who are fighting for the future of their home in the face of climate change. Looking at it in God's perspective, these people, and for us also, we have to look at it, that we are not victims of crisis. Rather, we are communities fighting for the future of our home together, the home that God created for all. The COVID-19 pandemic has made the disparities of our world today more obvious. Disparities in income and wealth, access to healthcare, along with desperate outcomes based on race and gender. But it has also created more opportunities for the church, for our Christian communities, faith organizations to live out our prophetic calling. It is our opportune time to be awake and to wake others to be proactive in the issues of inequalities and injustices around the world. The work for justice and peace is still a long way to go. We are not there yet. Although there have been some important landmarks that were achieved in the past decades, these are not enough. We must strive towards God's economy where everyone has access to basic human rights and needs and resources are shared equally to all. And we are not alone. Let us allow God's spirit to work in and through us. During this time of the pandemic, we have seen many solidarity movements arise now that people recognize the need for change. They mobilize, they draw inspiration from the strength of the people. They take initiative to move us forward or to move us toward a new normal and hopefully not go back to the broke, <laughs> to the old normal. Indeed, we can see and attain beauty in many forms, beauty in many areas. We can see beauty in many contexts from the existing brokenness right now. So before I close, let's just take a pause. And I know there's so much that I shared, but just take a, a few seconds to pause. And then I'll share with us our closing blessing. May God bless you with discomfort at, and, at easy answers, half-truths, and superficial relationships so that you will live deep in your heart. May God bless us with anger at injustice and exploitation of people and the earth so that we will work for justice, equity, and peace. May God bless us with tears to shed for those who suffer so we will reach out our hand to comfort them and change their pain into joy. And may God bless us with the foolishness to think that we can make a difference in the world so we will do the things which others say cannot be done. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Joy, for this incredible and wonderful message telling us more about what God is thinking about this world and what our future perspectives are. Thank you very much. Somebody told us in a Facebook chat the following sentences. When we give our brokenness to God, he's able to create something more beautiful than what we had in the first place. And this is the invitation for us to gather as global YMCA and YWCA movement together in prayer. Let us ask God for help 
and let us pray about the brokenness around us. Let us also confess that God's goodness is among us and pray for renewal, for reconciliation. And we invite you to pray with us. If you would like to, you are kindly invited to type your prayers into the comment section. Claudia and I will say a prayer. Claudia will begin and I will respond to it. And after this uh, prayer, there will be a time where you can continue to type your prayers into the comment sections. And Claudia and I will read some of those praying to God with this. So feel free to pray with us, be united with us and God in prayer. Okay. You will see Daniel? it. Okay. Okay, so thank you, Daniel, and well, let us pray. Lord, we come to you with all our brokenness. We have gone to the cross with our willingness to take all our brokenness on you. We thank you for the sacrifice. We ask for wisdom, smart, and courageous decisions during the deliberations around the COP26 summit. And with the assurance of our deed, we bring to you what is broken in us and in our world. We thank you for the knowledge that you are willing to carry our burdens, our hurts and our pain. We thank you that you promised us renewal and reconciliation. Let us continue in prayer. May we, blessed, may we be blessed with courage to discern how best to bring good impact to our world. Help us not to grow weary in our struggle for justice and peace. And Lord, we are praying for peace and justice. And we pray that God always touches our heart with the repairs of others. God, forgive us for our complicity in the destruction of the, your creation. It's often the hearts of the leaders of the nations and companies to score the bowels of the earth for profit. Help us to stop their habit and our greed. And may we be blessed with courage to discern how best to bring good impact to the world. We pray that God always touches our hearts with the despair of others and give us the strength to reach out. And Lord, we ask you for peace. And we pray for the global leaders at the Climate Conference in Scotland so that they may decide to restore this world. God, steer our hearts to respond to the brokenness in our communities. Open our eyes to see the hidden brokenness in those we serve. And help me to trust you, to give you my brokenness, renew and remake me. Help us to see the justice and the nightmares are one with salvation and your love for all. We are praying in brokenness. God is love and healing. Loving God, send your Holy Spirit to renew and revive us. And all this, what we have prayed, Lord, we pray in the name of our precious Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Thank you, all of you, for your prayers, for sharing your thoughts into the chat box. So now let us continue to worship with a song. Blessed be your name by Rod Redman, sung by Phil Gray, and you and you and Golden from YMCA in England. Okay, bye.
Blessed be your name in the land that is plentiful, where the streams of abundance flow. Blessed be your name. Blessed be your name when I'm found in the desert place, though I walk through the wilderness. Blessed be your name. blessing you've poured out I'll turn back to praise when the darkness closes in Lord still I will say blessed be the name of the Lord blessed be your name blessed be the name of the Lord blessed be your glory Blessed be your name when the sun's shining down on me and the world's all as it should be. Blessed be your name. Blessed be your name on the road marked with suffering. Though there's pain in the offering, blessed be your name. Every blessing you've poured out, I'll turn back to praise. When the darkness closes in, Lord, still I will say, Blessed be the name of the Lord, blessed be your name. Blessed be the name of the Lord, blessed be your glory. Blessed be the name of the Lord, blessed be your name, blessed be the name of the Lord, blessed be your glorious name. You give and take away, you give and take away, my heart will choose to say, Lord, blessed be your name. You give and take away. You give and take away. My heart will choose to say, Lord, blessed be your name. You give and take away. You give and take away. You give and take away, my heart will choose to say, Lord, blessed be your name. Blessed be the name of the Lord, blessed be your name. Blessed be the name of the Lord, blessed be your glorious name. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Blessed be your name. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Blessed be your glorious Thank you very much, Phil and Joanne, for leading us in worship. We will continue to pray together, and the Lord's Prayer unites us all over the global, uh, all over the world. And we would like to invite you to join us in the Lord's Prayer. And some young people from all over the world will pray in the following sequence this Lord's Prayer in their own language. And you are invited to join to pray it in your own language or just to step in into this prayer in the languages that you see. We kindly invite it. Let us pray all together the Lord's Prayer.
أبانا الذي في السماوات ليتقدس اسمك ليأتي ملكوتك لتكن مشيئتك كما في السماء كذلك على الأرض أعطنا خبزنا كفاف يومنا واغفر لنا ذنوبنا وخطيانا كما نحن نغفر لمن خطأ وأساء إلينا ولا تدخلنا في التجارب لكن نجنا من الشرير لأن لك الملك والقوة والمجد إلى أبد الأبدين آمين <تصفيق> 愿您的旨意行在地上Mulikin ka shi zo abun da kake so a yi shi a cikin duniya kamar yadda ake yin sa a sama ka ba mu rana ga abincin ili ka gafarta mana laifofin mu kamar yadda muke gafarta mu masu mana laifi kada ka kai mu cikin jaraba amma ka cece mu daga mugu gama mulki da iko da girma na haka ne har abada amin notre Père qui es aux cieux, que ton nom soit sanctifié, que ta reine vienne, que ta volonté soit faite, sur la terre comme au ciel. Donne-nous aujourd'hui notre pain de ce jour. Pardonne-nous nos offenses, comme nous pardonnons aussi à ceux qui nous ont offensés. Ne nous laisse pas entrer en tentation, mais délivre-nous du mal, car c'est à toi qu'appartiennent le règne, la puissance et la gloire pour des siècles et des siècles. Amen. Baba Watim Benyom, Kabo Foul Komimore. Ki joba rede, ife ti eni ka she laye, du won ti she ni onro, fo alon jwa jwa aloni, da are e shwa jwa, bi ati da ri jan wato shwa, ma fa a sinu don wu, shubwa ba alo obilisi, to ri joba an ti re, agbar an ti re, ogo an ti re, lai lai a mi. Baba redu, variku de nga, zita re nyu, ngari e riske, umambo we nyu, nga usike, kudakwe nyu, nga ku itwe, pa si so kude nga. Tipe inaasi chingwa chedu chemi siese. Muti sunungu ure shitato shedu. Sezo tino sunungu urava no titazira. Musa titunga mitzire mururu nziro. Asi muti nunure mkuipa. Ndizo umampo uriwenyu. Nesi mba nembiri. Narini narini. Amen. ஒருவனாகும்ோதனை <laughs> Well, as we come towards to the end of this worship service, we welcome to the program manager of the World YMCA, Maricris Aldarriaga. Maricris will give the concluding address to us in this global YMCA YWCA movement. After that, she will say the benediction. Welcome, Marie Chris. And Marie Chris will close the service with the benediction, and it, this will be followed by a final closing worship song called "God of the Poor or Beauty for Brokenness" by Graham Kendrick. We would like to say thank you to all who participated in this service today. Everybody joining us during worship and prayer. And thank you for all those people having prepared this wonderful afternoon, this wonderful service. And now, welcome once again, Marie Chris. Good to have you here. We're happy to have you here. And it's up to you. Thank you, Daniel. And thank you, Claudia, for that introduction. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, wherever you are. I am Marie Chris. And uh, today I bring you greetings on behalf of our General Secretary, Mr. Carlos Zambi. We are at COP26 in Glasgow, Scotland, uh, with a delegation of YMCA Youth Ambassadors, uh, and we are here to protect our Earth. 
So I can really much relate to what Joy shared us a few minutes before. Now I'll read the final benediction from Ephesians chapter 3, verses 20 to 21. Now to God, who is able to do unmeasurably more than all we ask or imagine, according to the power that is at work within us, to the Holy One be glory in the church and in Christ Jesus throughout all generations, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. And now we will hear the final worship song. Thank you so much for participating. Have a good afternoon. Your kingdom increase Shelter for fragile lives Cures for their ills Work for the craftsmen Trade for their skills Land for the dispossessed Rights for the weak Voices to plead the cause of those who can't speak. God of the poor, friend of the weak, give us compassion, we pray. Melt our cold hearts, let tears fall like rain. Come change our love from a spark to a flame. for the pain God of the poor friend of the weak give us compassion we pray melt our cold hearts the tears fall like rain come change our love from a spark to a flame Earth, oceans and streams Plundered and poisoned A future and dreams Lord in our madness Carelessness, greed Make us content with The things that we need Until your justice burns brightly again Until the nations learn of your ways Seek 
your salvation and bring you their praise. God of the poor, friend of the weak, give us compassion, we pray. Melt our cold hearts, the tears fall like rain. Come change our love from a spark. Change our love from a spark.